Let's get the show started as ever with the papers. John Sargent, the former BBC and ITN political correspondent, joins me this morning. John, lovely to see you. Thank you for your company. Let's have a look at the newspapers, which are dominated really by one story, and that's this post office scandal. I find it interesting, John, that we've known about this having affected sub postmasters across the country for years, and yet it's this ITV documentary, yeah. Mr. Bates versus the post office, that's brought this all to light. Let's have a look at some of the stories. The Sunday Times has got a huge spread lost in the post. Um, the Sunday Express is talking about more post office victims emerging, 70 more since the documentary has gone out. And then we've had Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor, in the week saying that he's going to get the compensation for victims moving. So clearly, all hands on deck. One interesting aspect of this scandal that um, has shone out to me this morning in some of the coverage is the role of the Liberal Democrats, of all people, because, of course, Liberal Democrat leader Ed Davey was in charge of postal services for the coalition government during the period that this horizon problem occurred. So is he now in dicey water? John, what do you think? Well, I think it'll come up time and time again, the role that he played, <clears throat> because not only was he the minister directly responsible, but Alan Bates, who we see in the, in the programme being played by Toby Jones, wrote to him yeah. the moment he was appointed, so I'd like to have a meeting. And Ed Davey replied, I didn't think he didn't think that would be useful. Yes. And so Alan Bates then thought, how disappointing. And then for then on, for the next five years of coalition, you've got not just Ed Davey there, but you've got the two other ministers, Vince Cable, yeah. Sir Vince Cable, and Joe Swinson. Yes. Who are responsible for post office oversight. Yeah. So it's not sort of, oh, it's a bit of argy-bargy. These people really were responsible. That's three Liberal Democrat leaders at the end of the day. And also, um, Mr Bates says in his reply to Ed Davey that he actually found the dismissive way that he was dealt with offensive. Offensive, yeah. And Ed Davey's basically trying to say, this is not a government matter, it's a post office matter. But hang on a minute, if the government can't vicariously take responsibility, and obviously it's conceded it must, because we've got Jeremy Hunt talking about compensation, okay. then what on earth was Ed... I mean, could this be politically damaging to Ed Davey? On one hand, mm. he's not got that much of a recognition factor, and we'll get on to that, because that mm. may be why reform is doing well against the Lib Dems. But on the other hand, he's now splashed all over the newspapers, and people are going to be thinking about him in the wrong context for him politically. Exactly. Saying things with me. Well, of course, it wants to do with him. And as you say, once the government admit they've got to pay compensation, and that's now completely agreed, there's no... That's not argued about anymore. Mm. Well, then Ed Davies' position completely crumbles. Yes. When he says, oh, well, we were trying to keep the post office at arm's length. Yeah. Because they were trying to commercialise the post office and not give the impression that the government were in there all the time. Yeah. But even so, when it came to it, of course, the government are responsible. Also, I love the um, headline on the um, Sunday Times. They've spoken to Mr Bates, and Mr Bates basically says, you know, I was asking for 36 grand. This scandal has ended up costing... Two billion potentially. Oh, yeah. So, actually, in the scheme of things, why on earth weren't these sub postmasters treated with a lot more respect? Of course, yeah. we must remember that one of them took their own life over this scandal. Yeah. I think the public is enraged by it. And um, 600,000 people, John, have now signed a petition calling on the government to strip Paula Vanells, who was the former post office CEO, of her CBE. Do you support that? Well, I think there's a strong case for that, a very strong case. They do it sometimes. And the feeling that, oh, nobody gets blamed. They all sort of wander off. Yeah. Um, I think really upsets people. Definitely. And also kind of a reward for failure and this idea that yeah. she's got the CBE, she's now clear of the scandal. That's Meanwhile, we've got people who've worked for the post office for years mm. still putting their lives back together. People are hugely out of pocket. And here's this woman sort of basking in the glory yeah. of an honour. I agree. And, and one of the columnists is saying, oh, well, this will prove to people how cynical the whole thing is. But... That's a bit of an obscure argument. Yes. People want, they want, they want someone to be held responsible. And if not the CEO of the post office at the time, then who? Who else? Let's move on to Sunak. He's given an interview in the Sunday Telegraph. Look, he's not said that much, John. He's talked about how a vote for uh, reform is just a vote for Starmer. He's sort of suggesting he wants to curb benefits and cut taxes, obviously not committing to any mm. policies in the forthcoming budget in March. Uh, there's been talk of them scrapping IHT, inheritance tax. Let's wait and see. Um, 
You've got an interesting theory on this suggestion that he's going to hold the election in the second half of this year. Yeah. You think it'd be better to go to the polls in spring? Well, the, the sad thing for him is that this is virtually an admission that he couldn't win in mm. the spring. So this is quite a big moment. So although you can say, oh, well, he's just saying it's at the moment he's thinking of the second half of the year. But he's saying something more than that. He's saying, look, there are lots of things which would benefit by an early election getting across the immigration problem, getting across by-elections, all sorts of other things that have mm. come up. Um, migration coming across the channel in the summer. Yeah, he's going to leave a whole summer for, whole like, for more people coming over on boats. I mean, you could argue that if they came up with a really punchy budget in March and captured the imagination, mm. I don't know, slashing yeah. income tax, even with that coming suggestion of raising the threshold from 52,000 to 100,000, sure. you can just imagine, John, and scrapping IHT, they might actually get things back on track. But how well, radical do you think Sunak's willing to be? Well, but he's made it quite clear at the moment he's thinking no. Mm. Well, that is that is a white flag being put up. and there's, It's not there's the no time for over-caution. He's got nothing to lose. No, he's, we've now got a working assumption that he does not think he could win an yeah. election, which is quite a, quite a moment. Quite an admission. Let's talk about the flooding for Argo. Um, people watching this, in fact, will be affected by these yeah. floods. Uh, they've taken hold, particularly um, in areas of Gloucestershire and beyond. Um, but we understand from a report in the Mail on Sunday that the Environment Agency that's been very criticised for kind of pro promoting rewilding and refusing to dredge rivers has been sitting on 300 million quid that was earmarked for flood defences. Does the EA have questions to answer? Whenever I do a story on flooding, there's always intense criticism of the Environment Agency's mm -hmm. handling of this situation. It is just shocking. I mean, they took a gamble that there wouldn't be floods. What at a time like at this time of year? Yeah. Hold on. But how do uh, they don't have a crystal ball? What are they thinking? What are they thinking? And even if they could maybe just halve that, but 300 million. So, as the mail says, the people in Nottinghamshire are furious, and rightly so, Pe particularly people swishing about in their kitchens mm. with the Wellington boots on, thinking our lives will never be the same again. Yeah. I mean, and actually, you oh. just think the Environment Agency should be doing its job. John Sargent, thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning. Lovely to see you.